हेलो स्टूडेंट्स गुड मॉर्निंग गुड आफ्टरनून गुड इवनिंग गुड नाइट जैसा भी जिसका जो टाइम हो जब भी ये वीडियो देखा जा रहा है स्टूडेंट्स आज हम आपके सामने लेके आए हैं लेक्चर ऑन ह्यूमन आई ह्यूमन आई बेसिकली एक चैप्टर ह्यूमन आई एंड इट्स कलरफुल वर्ल्ड का स्टार्टिंग पार्ट है तो ह्यूमन आई के बारे में डिस्कशन होगी आज अब हाउ टू स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन ऑफ ह्यूमन आई सो ऑल ऑफ यू नो सबको पता है कि ह्यूमन आई एक बहुत कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑर्गन है इनफैक्ट डॉक्टर्स ये मानते हैं कि ह्यूमन आई ह्यूमन बॉडी की सेकेंड मोस्ट कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑर्गन है आफ्टर दी ह्यूमन ब्रेन यस एंड आई रेड अ सर्वे विच सेट दैट स्टिल द डॉक्टर्स आर नॉट हैविंग द नॉलेज ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम रिलेटेड टू ह्यूमन आई दैट मीन्स इट इज सो कॉम्प्लिकेटेड टू स्टडी कि इसकी मेजोरिटी प्रॉब्लम्स या तो हमें उनका इलाज नहीं पता अभी तक या कई ऐसी प्रॉब्लम्स हैं जो हमें अभी समझ ही नहीं आ रही कि वट डिजीज आर दीज और वट एरिया ऑफ द्यूमन आई इज हैविंग प्रॉब्लम विद इन अ पर्टिकुलर इवेंट और कंडीशन सो इतने कॉम्प्लिकेटेड ऑर्गन को हम स्टडी कैसे करें द आइडिया इज वेरी सिंपल टू स्टडी ह्यूमन आई यू ओनली नीड टू स्टडी इट्स डिफरेंट कोट्स और लेयर्स जितनी कोटिंग की वो बनी होती है एंड इट्स कॉन्टेंट उसके अंदर क्या होता है सो लेट स्टार्ट सो वट एम ट्राइंग टू से टू स्टडी ह्यूमन आई यू ओनली नीड टू स्टडी इट्स कोट इट्स कोट राइट दिस इज द ऑप्टिक नर्व इज दैट राइट इट्स कोट एंड इट्स बेसिक कॉन्टेंट्स इसके अंदर क्या है अगर आप इसके कंटेंट्स और इसके कोटिंग को स्टडी कर ले समझ ले तो ह्यूमन आई आपको समझ आ जाएगी सो शैल बी स्टार्ट ओके सो आई ड्रॉइंग अगेन सो ह्यूमन आई बेसिकली हैज एन आउटरमोस्ट कोटिंग We are going to start from the very outermost coating to the inner surfaces, right? So let me draw the outermost coating of human eye. Here we have a bulge, and here is the optic nerve, right? So. This is the outermost coat of human eye. What is this outermost coat called as? This outermost coat is called as sclera, right? I'll write over here. So the first part we are going to study is the outermost coat of human eye, right? So first part, the outermost surface of this coat is called as sclera. Sclera. It is a very tough membrane, right? It gives the eye its shape. It's also called as the white of the eye. White of the eye, right? So the outermost coat or the protective coat. This is the protective coat. It protects the inner portion of the eyes. The protective coat of the human eye has first part sclera. it is called the outermost layer of the eye and it is also popularly known as the white of the eye is it right very nice now the sclera it constitutes nearly 5/6 of an eyeball that means total eyeball ka jitna area banta hai ya jitna portion banta hai uske six parts equally parts kiye jaye to usme se five parts ka area सिर्फ स्क्लेरा ऑक्यूपाई करता है इज इट राइट एंड वट इज द सेकेंड सब पार्ट ऑफ द आउटर मोस्ट कोटिंग सो दिस इज द आउटर मोस्ट कोटिंग द स्क्लेरा इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट इज इट राइट इट गोस ऑल दी वे बैक लाइक दिस एंड इट एंड एट दिस पॉइंट इज इट राइट सो द स्क्लेरा इट स्टार्ट फ्रॉम दिस पॉइंट it goes all the way back like this circular anticlockwise motion 
and it comes over here. Is it right? Now, what is this part known as? This is the second part, sub part of the outermost coating of the eye. It is called as the cornea. The cornea. And it constitutes nearly one fifth of the eye. Is that right? So, one fifth of the eyeball is covered by nearly cornea. Is that right? Now, so this is the cornea. So, this is the outermost coating or the protective coating of the human eye. Right? Now, when we move further inside, we have a nutritive layer or the middle coat. So, let me start from here. Here we have an optic disc and we have a middle coat. Like this. From here, the middle coat is going forward, as you can see, to the front of the eye. Is that right? So, what is the front of the eye? What is the anterior portion of the eye? This is the anterior of the eye. What is the meaning of anterior? That means the front. And this is the back portion of the eye. And right over here posterior portion of the eye. That means the back. Is it right? So anterior or front means face ki taraf, right? Yaha se light enter kare ki. Posterior is head ki taraf, piche ki taraf. Is it right? So, so this is the middle coat of the eye. And it goes, it started from here, we took it there, we took it there. And as it moves to the anterior portions, is it right? As it moves to the anterior portions, it becomes triangular in shape. It becomes triangular in structure, in shape, right? Like this. It becomes triangular in structure. It becomes thickened, moti ho jate. And then it forms a diaphragm. It forms a diaphragm like this. It forms a diaphragm. So basically, this red portion which I made, this is known as the middle coat of the eye. Is it right? So middle coat. Sometimes you also call it layer, right? Middle coat of eye. Now, the middle coat of eye, it consists of, first, what is the nature of this middle coat? Before giving these parts names, what is the nature of the middle coat? The nature of middle coat of the eye is nutritive coat, means it provides nutrition. So it is called as the nutritive coat or it is also called as the vascular coat. What it is called as the vascular coat. What is the meaning of vascular? It means this middle coat which I made in red color. This has huge supply of blood vessels to provide the nutrition to the innermost coat which will come later. So we are going to talk after this, but what are the components of the middle coat of eye? So I started from here and this region, this coat, this middle layer, which starts from this optic disc portion and goes to the anterior portions, front side, till here, right? Till here, this is known as choroid. What? It is known as choroid. So what is the region of choroid? The region of choroid is from here, this coating, right up to this triangular body. From one triangular body to the other triangular body. This is known as choroid. Is that right? Now, 
the second part of this middle coat was these triangular structures what are these these are known as ciliary ciliary bodies ciliary bodies is that right and the third part of the middle coat this structure this is a diaphragm known as iris iris of the eye we'll discuss later on what are their functions but this is a diaphragm known as iris of the eye is that right now we come to the innermost layer of human eye why so much protection this sclera is providing protection it is the protective coat it is very hard it provides shade to the eyeball it provides protection to the internal portions of the eyeball why so much internal protection why so much protection is required to the internal components of the eyeball so here we answer it let's move to the third portion of the eyeball the innermost coat and the innermost coat is the real coat of the eyeball which does the real function of the eyeball what is the real function of the eye to see things right so the inner coat is responsible so that you can see things you can know what is happening your brain can interpret those things right so it goes from here like this and goes like this but there's a but there's a deep ex explanation of this retina i'll tell you over here let me make this retina let me make this cross section of the eyeball here just see i am going to make this portion zoomed in over here i am going to make this portion zoomed in over here it's just like i have cut a part of the eyeball and i'm studying it under the microscope so this is the this is the outermost layer of the eyeball this black layer what is this this layer is it right then there is the middle coat of the eyeball is it right what is this this is the choroid is it right then we have the innermost real layer of the eye which performs the real function of the human eye this this complete is retina but the retina is having two parts the lower part this portion of the retina is pigmented means it is colored it is dark this is the pigment layer of retina and the upper portion of the retina it has these structures like this hair like structures this is called as the neural layer the neural layer is it right and these two layers they together form the retina so what is retina how do we make this this two parts of retina over here so this is the pigmented layer of the retina is it right this is the pigmented layer of retina and over it there are neural layer there is neural layer is it right so this is the neural layer this is the neural layer of the retina 
न्यूरल लेयर एंड पिगमेंट लेयर दे बोथ फॉर्म द इनर मोस्ट कोट रेटिना इज इट राइट सो द इनर मोस्ट कोट और द लेयर ऑफ द आई हैज रेटिना व्हिच कंसिस्ट ऑफ टू लेयर्स वन न्यूरल लेयर and the other pigmented but what is important to understand is this pigmented layer is in a very deep connection very deep interaction with the choroid it is in connection with the choroid and choroid also has this is the choroid it also has a level of pigmentation means coloring it is also a level of color is it right so this is how we draw the three coatings three layers of the human eye now what is more important to understand is the retina it consists of two layers neural layer and pigment layer the rods and cones there are some special cells in the human eye i'll tell you about them the rods and cones are those special cells they are rods and cones inside this neural layer there are rods and cones inside this neural layer so the rods and cones are there inside this neural layer but they are not on the pigmented layer the rods and cones are special cells i talk about them in a while they are present in the neural layer right these hair like portions of the retina but they are not present in the pigmented layer the below layer the lower layer of the retina and the retina the pigment layer of retina it is carried it is carried to this point it is carried till this point it is also there at the back portion of this ciliary body like this this was the ciliary body it is also there in the back portion of the ciliary body and it is also there in the back portion of the iris it is also there in the back portion of the iris so a part of the retina that is the pigmented layer of the retina it goes up to the iris it goes up to the iris but this portion it is not having this portion is not having the neural layer from this point just see from this point from this point there is only one part of the retina that is the pigmented layer this one the neural layer is absent so it is important to understand that this much portion is not having any rods and cones any light cells rods and cones are not present in this portion so they will not form any image at this portion so this is about the three innermost or the three coatings of the human eye now i'll talk about rods and cones what are these rods and cones okay pay attention rods and cones are pay attention they are basically transducers they are basically transducers we can call them transducers what is the meaning of transducers transducer is anything that converts one form of energy into another form that converts one form of energy into another form now rods and cones are definitely the cells and what do they do why they are called as transducers because 
rods and cones rods and cones convert light or ice cd light convert electromagnetic wave energy light is an electromagnetic wave electromagnetic wave energy in simple terms we can call it light so rods and cones convert electromagnetic wave energy into electrical impulses or electrical energy so rods and cones convert electromagnetic wave energy basically light energy into electrical energy so when light falls on the retina on this neural layer these rods and cones these are basically cells these are transducers cells they are basically cells they get activated and they start converting this electrical input into sorry this electromagnetic input into electrical output that is what rods and cones do and this information which is formed it is passed on i draw over here through optic fibers it is passed on from the retina this information is passed on through optic fibers to the to the optic nerve to the optic nerve is that right so this is what rods and cones do and for your more knowledge the human retina and the neural layer of the retina it consists of rods and cones there are nearly there are nearly 120 million rod cells in one human eye and nearly 5 to 7 million cone cells in the human eye so that means these rod cells and cone cells we call them transducer cells or we also call them receptor cells what do they receive light they receive light energy so we call them photoreceptors photo means light so they are receiving cells so these photoreceptors they are nearly 125 million 125 to 127 million of photoreceptors in one human eye and majority of them are rods now you must be thinking sir in cells ko rod cells or cone cells ko kehte hain so the answer is pretty simple when these cells are studied under very powerful microscopes rod cells they actually appear cylindrical just like a rod and cone cells they appear conical just like a cone that's why they are called as rod cells and cone cells one more thing what is the exact functional difference between rod cells and cone cells why rod cells and cone cells what do they have different apart from the structure so there is a functional difference too what is that see i'll mention over here let's say the rod cells the rod cells they are responsible for i'll say receiving or they get activated they are i'll say susceptible whatever we can say they are judging not judging sensing sensing is a good word they sense the intensity of light falling on them so rod cells basically they sense the intensity of light that means is the light bright or is the light dim while the cone cells cone cells they sense the color of light they sense the color of light basically human eyes have three types of cone cells are cone cells green cone cells and blue cone cells is that right so they together make the rgb set 
and you know that red, green and blue are the primary colors in the light spectrum. So they form all the other possible colors. This is what cones do and rods do. Is that right? So this is very conceptual aspect of the human eye. Now, we have not discussed the content of the human eye. So let us discuss that also. So first of all, let me draw the eye lens. So here we have an eye lens. This is the, I'll draw somewhat front. This is the eye lens, right? right? It is a membrane transparent disc, convex in shape. So this is the eye lens, is that right? Now the eye lens is held by the ciliary body. The eye lens is held by the ciliary body by ligaments. The eye lens is held by the ciliary body by ligaments. We call these ligaments as this eye lens is held by the ciliary bodies by ligaments. We call them suspensory bodies or suspensory ligaments. Usually they are called as suspensory ligaments. Is that right? So the eye lens it is held by ciliary body using ligaments. We call them suspensory ligaments. There is like one set above and one set below. Basically the ciliary body is also circular. This triangular portion which you look from the side because this is a two dimensional board. Ciliary body is circular hoti hai. But hum yahan pe sirf 2D bana rahe hai. Isli aapko aise dikh rahe hai. Is it right? Now what are the other contents of the eyeball? So this portion I will draw with this marker. Mm -hmm. Let it be. So this part from the cornea, this is the cornea to this portion, it is filled by a fluid. This fluid is called as what is it called as? Aqueous humor, right? Aqueous humor. Is it right? And here there is another layer of fluid that fills the rest of the eyeball. After the after the lens, this portion, this is filled by another fluid. This portion is filled by another fluid and this fluid is known as vitreous body or popularly it is known as vitreous humor. Is it right? Right. So this is a very basic concept of the eyeball. Yeah. So this retina, I'll okay, I'll leave it over here only. This retina has two subparts: the neural layer and the pigmented layer. Is it right? And the neural neural layer it contains the rods and cones. So I can say the neural layer can also be called as light sensitive layer. Is it right? So the neural layer can be called as light sensitive layer for a better approach because it contains the rods and cones which are known as photoreceptors, light receptors. These are transducer cells that convert the electromagnetic wave energy that is coming inside the eye in the form of light and convert it into electrical energy, right? So this is a very basic and the structural diagram of human eye with the part of the photoreceptors explained functionally. Now let us also discuss how light comes in and some more details. So pay attention. The light enters 
from the anterior portion of the eye like this it enters the it passes just see have a, like a clear pattern the light force approaches the cornea after cornea I, I will tell the various parts that come in the path of light one after the other another so light is coming through this part let's say first cornea it hits the cornea then it moves inside and passes through the aqueous humor so cornea aqueous humor this window this window is called as pupil is it right so pupil is the window and the size of the pupil is controlled by this muscular diaphragm known as iris here iris is it right so the light passes through pupil hits the lens passes through vitreous humor and then falls on the retina the retina has two parts the neural layer or the light sensitive layer and the pigment layer the light sensitive layer has rods and cones when light falls on them they get activated and they start doing the transducer function they convert the electromagnetic wave energy into electrical energy is that right and then that information is passed on to the brain i'll say it, not only to the brain the information is passed on to the central nervous system the cns of the body and this portion has brain and the spinal cord is it right so the central nervous system has two parts the brain and the spinal cord so this information from the eye will pass to the central nervous system to the brain and to the spinal cord combined right now one important part to discuss is that there is a spot there is a point on the retina where this optic nerve leaves the eyeball somewhat over here i'll mark it with a black pen this is the point right i am darkening it this is the point this is the point where the optic nerve leaves the eyeball at this point there are no photoreceptors that means there are no rods or there are no cones so this point when if light is focused at this point no image is going to be formed no image is going to be formed the brain will see nothing the eyes will see actually the light is going in but the brain will not form any image aapke samne wo cheez hogi bhi but aapko wo dikhai nahi padegi this point is known as i'll mark over here this point is known as the blind spot is that right the blind spot so what is blind spot it is a point on the retina exactly where the optic nerve leaves the eyeball and here there are no photoreceptors so no images are formed at this point that is why it is called as a blind spot is it right and there is one more portion to study that is a point slightly above the blind spot we mark it with a different pen let's say i'll mark it with green okay for the sake of variety this is this point this point has a very large concentration of cone cells yes this point is called as the yellow spot sorry i am not having a yellow pen so i am writing green but this point is called as a yellow spot and this yellow spot is it right this yellow spot it has a very high concentration of cone cells that is why if any images formed at this point the yellow spot the person wo jo person hoga wo bahut acche se us image ki details ko na sirf capture karega balki unka brain ya central nervous system bahut acche se us image ko perceive karenge aur ho sakta hai yaad bhi rakhe aisa kai baar hota hai kai images ko jab aap dekhte ho pictures ko aap dekhte ho उनकी डिटेल्स कई दिनों या कई बार कई सालों के बाद तक आपको याद रहती है ऐसा इसलिए देखा गया है बिकॉज समाइम्स द इमेजेस आर फॉर्म एट ब्लाइंड एट सॉरी येलो स्पॉट एंड येलो स्पॉट हैज अ हाई कंसेंट्रेशन ऑफ कोन सेल्स दैट इज वाई द इमेजेस इन सो मच डिटेलिंग क्योंकि कोन सेल्स का काम होता है कलर को 
sense karna is it right so this is how, how we talk about the functional part of the human eye is it right one more thing which i want to discuss is what is the role of these two oh i forgot to tell you about the nature of these two vertebrates the vitreous humor is like a i'll say gel it is not quite thin it is just like a jelly material or gel like material while the aqueous humor is less thick is it right so what is the role of the vitreous humor this liquid and what is the role of aqueous humor so there are basically two functions of these two liquids or gel like structures or these fluids the first role is i'll write over here the vitreous humor and the aqueous humor they have two basic functions the first function is that they provide intraocular pressure they provide intraocular pressure to the eye what is intraocular pressure see intra means from within and ocular means related to the eye so from within the eye kya hota hai ki human eye agar ye liquid se fluid se na bhari hoti to human eye pichak jata hai because andar se hollow hoti ye pura portion ye pura portion khali hota to ye andar se hollow hoti pichak jati so it provides intraocular pressure that means aise ये वॉल्स को प्रेस रखती है ताकि ये जो आउटर वॉल्स हैं ये अंदर को पिचक ना जाए इज एट राइट दिस इज द मीनिंग ऑफ इंट्रा ऑक्यूलर प्रेशर यू डो हैव नो नीड टू ड्रॉ दिस सो यू गॉट द आइडिया इज एट राइट सो दैट इज द इंट्रा ऑक्यूलर प्रेशर दिस इज वन फंक्शन ऑफ दिट्रेस ह्यूमर एंड एक्वस ह्यूमर एंड द सेकेंड फंक्शन इज न्यूट्रीटिव फंक्शन these humors they contain much gel much nutrition much nutrients so they provide nutrition to the internal layers of the eye such as retina वैसे रेटिना को ज्यादा न्यूट्रिशन कोरोइड प्रोवाइड करता है why because कोरोइड is the nutritive coat it is having large supply of blood vessels that is why it is red in color also यहां से मुझे याद आता है सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल कुछ और डिस्कस करने से पहले इस द ह्यूमन आई क्लियर आई होप इट इज क्लियर वेरी नाइस नाउ एक चीज मैं आपसे डिस्कस करता हूं कुछ एक्स्ट्रा नॉलेज के लिए यू मस्ट हैव हर्ड अबाउट द रेड आई इफेक्ट कि जैसे आप किसी पर्सन की कैमरा से पिक्चर लेते हैं सो so उनकी आंखें जो है वो लाल आती है डू यू नो व्हाट इट इज आई टेल यू दिस रेड आई इफेक्ट इज व्हेन मच लाइट एंटर्स द आई वॉन्ट राइट प्यूपल या आयरस ने प्यूपल का साइज कंट्रोल नहीं किया और ज्यादा लाइट वेस एंटर कर दी आई वॉन्ट में सो रेटेना पे फॉल की रेटेना के सेल्स फोटो रिसेप्टर्स एक्टिवेट हो गए और जो एक्स्ट्रा लाइट थी वो कहां पास होगी कोरोइड में कोरोइड वो लाइट एनर्जी एब्जॉर्ब कर लेता है ये कोरोइड का फंक्शन भी होता है वो एक्स्ट्रा लाइट को एब्जॉर्ब करता है बट कई बार लाइट इतनी ज्यादा अमाउंट में आती है आंखों के अंदर कि सारी की सारी को रॉयड के द्वारा एब्जॉर्ब नहीं होती तो फिर वो लाइट एनर्जी रिफ्लेक्ट होके बाहर आ जाती है और कैमरा उसे कैप्चर कर देता है तो क्योंकि वो कोरोइड से रिफ्लेक्ट होके बाहर आ रही है और कोरोइड का अपना रंग रेड होता है इसलिए कई बार पर्सन की फोटो लेते हुए उनकी आंखें लाल आती है तो फिर इसका हल क्या है हम कोरोइड को किसी और रंग का बना नहीं सकते ना ही रिप्लेस कर सकते हैं तो इसका हल ये है कि आजकल चाहे आप कैमरा देख लीजिए फोन देख लीजिए जिनमें भी फ्लैश होती है आजकल डबल फ्लैश की फैसिलिटी दी गई है फोन में कैमरास में क्यों जो फर्स्ट फ्लैश होता है वो बहुत कम लाइट एनर्जी का होता है वो क्यों किया जाता है उस लाइक उस फ्लैश का मेन मोटिव ये नहीं होता कि प्रॉपर लाइटिंग दी जाए ताकि फोटो आ जाए नहीं उस फ्लैश की वजह से हमारा आयरस प्यूपिल के साइज को एडजस्ट कर देता है क्योंकि लाइट आई ना स्टेमुलस आया तो आयरिस प्यूपिल को छोटा कर देता है तो उससे जब सेकंड फ्लैश होगा तो प्यूपिल में 
लिमिटेड अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी ही एंटर करेगी हम पीपल से हमारे आईबॉल को और फिर रेड आई इफेक्ट नहीं होगा इज इट राइट एक और बात मैं जो आपसे करना चाहता हूं वो ये है कि मैंने सिलरी मसल्स की बात नहीं की राइट सो बेसिकली ये जो सिलरी बॉडी होती है सिलरी बॉडी दीज आर सिलरी मसल्स होली एंड सिलरी बॉडी का ये सिलरी मसल्स का ही रोल होता है हमारे आई के फोकस को एडजस्ट करना इसके बारे में हम और भी डिस्कशन करेंगे बट आप ये समझिए कि ह्यूमन आई के पास एक एबिलिटी होती है दूर की और पास की चीजों को बढ़िया तरीके से फोकस करने की इसे हम कहते हैं पावर ऑफ एकोमोडेशन राइट सो हम मैक्सिमम कितनी दूर तक चीजों को फोकस कर सकते हैं द आंसर इज इंफिनिट तक उसे हम अपना फार पॉइंट कहते हैं और मिनिमम कितने नजदीक कोई चीज पड़ी हो तो आपकी आंखों पे फोकस हो सकती है रेटिना पे फोकस हो सकती है बिना स्ट्रेन लिए दैट इज अ डिस्टेंस ऑफ 25 फाइव सेंटीमीटर फ्रॉम दिया है उसे हम कहते हैं नियर पॉइंट ऑफ दिया है तो नॉर्मल पर्सन का नॉर्मल ह्यूमन बींग का फार पॉइंट है इंफिनिटी और नियर पॉइंट है 25 सेंटीमीटर या 0.25 टू फाइव मीटर्स कह लीजिए सो दिस इज वन थिंग विच आई वॉन्ट टू शेयर एन अदर थिंग इज परसिस्टेंस ऑफ विजन आर राइट ओवर योर परसिस्टेंस ऑफ विजन वट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ परसिस्टेंस ऑफ विजन देखिए ह्यूमन आई में ना एक टाइम लिमिट है कि कम से कम उतने टाइम के लिए लाइट एनर्जी अगर रेटेना पे आए तो ही हमारी आई उस ऑब्जेक्ट की इमेज बना सकती है उस ऑब्जेक्ट को देख सकती है एंड दैट टाइम बेसिकली डिफरेंट ऑथर्स डिफरेंट सोर्सेज है डिफरेंट टाइम ऑफ परसिस्टेंस ऑफ विजन I will take that time to be one twenty-fifth of a second. Some people say one twenty-fifth of a second. Some also say one sixteenth of a second. Is that right? I will take one twenty-fifth of a second as a better option. I think this has got more experimental support to say. So persistence of vision means the minimum time interval for which the light must fall on the retina. so that an image of it can be formed kai par hamare aankhon ke samne se itni tezi se object nikal jata hai ki uski image hum form nahi kar pate so wo time kam se kam 125th of a second matlab 1 125 means 1/4th of a second is it right so 1/4th of a second kam se kam time chahiye hota hai hamari aankhon ko kisi cheez ki image banane ke liye right so that will be all for human eye जॉब भी डिस्कस कर लें आपके साथ ह्यूमन आई के डिसीजेस डिफेक्ट्स हैं वो बाद में डिस्कस करेंगे इज इट राइट राइट हाँ वन मोर थिंग जो मैंने डिस्कस कर दी थी दैट इज ह्यूमन आई जो रेटिना पे इमेज फॉर्म होती है उसकी नेचर क्या होती है द इमेज फॉर्म एट दी रेटिना ऑफ द ह्यूमन आई इज ऑलवेज रियल एंड इम्पोर्टेंट रिमेम्बर दैट इसका ये मतलब है कि अगर आप किसी ऑब्जेक्ट को देख रहे हैं ना उसकी इमेज जो रेटिना पे बनती है तो वो इम्पोर्टेंट बनती है जस्ट सी दिस इज एन ऑब्जेक्ट स्टैंडिंग स्ट्रेट दिस इज द्यूमन आई राइट तो इमेज यहां बनेगी ऑफ इम्पोर्टेंट रियल एंड इम्पोर्टेंट बट जब इंफॉर्मेशन सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम को जाएगी इज एट राइट जब इंफॉर्मेशन सेंट्रल नर्वस सिस्टम और उसमें भी मतलब ब्रेन या स्पाइनल कॉर्ड को जाएगी तो वो उस इमेज को फिर से इन्वर्ट कर देगा और जिस सेंस में ऑब्जेक्ट खड़ा था उसी सेंस में इमेज भी बनेगी राइट सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट ह्यूमन आई राइट सो थैंक यू कीप लर्निंग कीप ग्रोइंग